All right, so let's have a look at this next question, part C. Evaluate the integral from naught to pi on two of, and then you can see this, uh, you know, particular integrand that's been presented to you, okay? Now, um, this is a heartbreakingly simple question. Um, I'm gonna say it's even simpler than the vector one that we were just looking at, not in terms of working, but in terms of the logic you needed to apply. And it low key broke our hearts when we were marking, and students looked at this question, and they said, ooh, it's an integral. It's got to, like, it's a product in here. I know what to do with a product in an integrand. I'm an extension two student. I'm going to go integration by parts on this. And, you know, hilarity ensued and you wasted a lot of time, okay? This is not a question that requires integration by parts. Uh, it's one of those classic situations where um, when you're holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, even though you're an extension two student, in fact, this doesn't require anything much more than extension one techniques. This is a classic reverse chain rule question. If we go ahead and write out uh, what this integral looks like, so this is, what do we say, part C. Part C, integral from naught to pi on two of e to the one plus cos x sine x dx. I will do one thing to this and you will see how simple it falls out as a reverse chain rule question. In fact, I think it's so simple, uh, simple, sinful. Uh, it's sinfully simple. Um, I think it's so straightforward. You don't even need to introduce a separate and explicit substitution. I think you can all do it in line. Let me prove it to you, okay? I'm going to write this as naught to pi on 2 of, um, put this out the front. Oopsie daisy. Make sure you take the whole pi with you. Shoop. Negative, negative sine x e to the one plus cos x, dx. Do you see it yet? Have I given enough clues when saying it's just a you know, reverse chain rule question? Um, is it not a, an e to the f of x that you've got on the right hand side of the integrand and an f, a very straightforward f dash x here on the left hand side, right? The derivative of one plus cos x, that one just differentiates to zero, but the cos x differentiates to minus sign, so you're good to go. Just by taking out that minus sign, um, you're ready and the advantage of not having to introduce an explicit substitution um, is that I don't have to change the variable uh, or the boundaries rather of integration. I just leave them as naught and pi on two. So here we go, I'm ready to integrate and watch this, watch how heartbreakingly simple it is. That minus sign out the front of the integral just stays put. Uh, what is this going to be? Well, it's an e to the power of something, e to the power of something, when you differentiate it, it doesn't change, right? So therefore you get e to the one plus cos x. It's so sadly simple. Maybe sinfully simple is the right way to describe it. So there you go, and all I need to do is just evaluate here my upper and lower bounds. So just be careful with your minus sign there. Uh, I'm gonna go, in fact, that minus sign means I'm just changing my order. I can do my, my um, upper boundary, sorry, my lower boundary first and then my upper boundary because it's just, you know, the minus sign just flips it all around. So therefore I'm gonna do the zero first, one plus cos zero, and then I'm gonna minus the pi on two one, one plus cos of pi on two. Okay, um, e to the power of one plus cos zero, cos zero is one, so therefore one plus one is two, and then on the end here, um, cos of pi on two is zero, so this is just e to the one, also known as e. And that's it. Um, it was very straightforward if you knew what you were doing. Okay, back into 3D vectors land. What is this question asking us? Find the angle between um, A and B, given you know, you've got the X, Y, Z components um, of these two vectors, correct to the nearest minute. Okay, now just like we saw a couple of brief questions ago, this is gonna be the use of the dot product, just a slightly different one. We know that a dot product of zero gives us two vectors at right angles. These are probably not at right angles, just by looking at the numbers, and so we're gonna find out what that exact angle is. Find the angle between them, let's have a go. So, part D. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, just so that I don't have to keep on referring to the paper, is I'm just going to write down the two vectors in question. So A is going to be 2i um, minus 3j plus 5k, and then B is designated by 5i plus 3j 
minus 7k. Alright, now for the next part, right, everyone likes to write this a slightly different way, um, but I'm just going to show you the way that I like to think about it. Um, I always go back to the original definition for the dot product and the fact that we can get at the dot product in two different ways. We can get at it by um, comparing the angles and magnitudes of the two vectors because that's what the dot product tells you, like, oh, how much are they working together and against with each other? Um, or you can do it just by comparing the components and we have proved why those two results are the same. So just to refresh your memory, um, that first um, way of saying it is that um, if you compare the magnitudes and also the angle between them, which is in fact the thing that we want, that should be the same as looking at our three different components. So x1 and x2, the product, y1 and y2, and then z1 z2. So I like to say, I like to just go back to that rather than having cos theta equals some big fraction, um, also because I just find fractions irritating to work with. So I'm going to say by the dot product, and I'm just going to write this result that I've written in orange, but for this particular question, right? So, um, what is the distance to A? Well, it's Pythagoras, so it's the square root of um, 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 5 squared. So, last I checked, that was 4 plus 9 plus 25. So, there's the distance to A. Here comes the distance to B, so it's going to be um, 5 squared plus 3 squared plus 7 squared, so that's 25 plus 9 plus 49. That's also all underneath the square root because of Pythagoras. And then there's the cos theta, that's the part I actually want. And now I just have a look at my x's and my y's and my z's. And you can see, by the way, I've sort of done a, I don't know if you noticed this, but I did a sneaky thing, right? I put these, I laid these out vertically so that my x's and my y's and my z's would just line up very neatly with each other so I can just do the multiplication without even thinking. So uh, why don't I use the colors since I've done them, right? Um, here comes the x's, 2 times 5. Uh, and then I'm going to do the y's, which is uh, minus 3 times 3. And then I'm going to do the z's, which is, what have we got here? 5 times negative 7. Okay, um, when I have a think about what I've got on the left-hand side, they're slightly messy numbers, that's okay. Um, it's going to be the square root of, that's going to be uh, 38, and then that's going to be 49 plus 9 is 58, so it's 83. There's the cos theta, hanging out there. And then when you simplify all of that, let's see, we've got 10, take away 9, take away 35. Um, by the way, you may say, Mr. Wu, just get out a calculator, man. Uh, and I will get out a calculator in a second, but I'm just kind of trying to push my brain for as much of this as I can, because the number of arithmetic errors that crept into all of your solutions indicates to me that your arithmetic muscles have atrophied from lack of use, because you're like, I have a calculator, I don't need to crunch these numbers. But you guys know, a calculator will just give you the answer to the question you ask it. You punch a single number wrong, put a bracket wrong, forget to tap a minus sign or press it too hard, um, you know the answer will be wrong and you won't even know it's wrong, right? So that's why I'm pushing my brain to try and do this calculation. Uh, let's see, what do I get here? So um, 10 take away 9 is just negative, uh, it's just positive 1. Take away 35 is negative 34. I'm going to divide by those gross square roots over there on the right hand side. And at this point, I will reach for my calculator. Um, you go ahead and you can work this out. I've already worked it out for myself. It's, you end up simplifying this to negative 0.6054 and some other stuff. So that's cos theta. What I really want is theta. And of course, one of the nice things about cosine is that it'll give us the angle um, unambiguously. So that's really nice. So that's 127.258 and some other. Um, decimal places, degrees, the, the accuracy that we were asked for was correct to the nearest minute. So again, when you pop that into your calculator, hit the degrees, minutes, seconds button, and you should get 127 degrees and 15 minutes. And you should always say how far you have um, approximated. And there you go.